Hello everyone, Kerry the Craft here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter. And today I'm here and pleased to present to you some of my new products. Um, I just launched, well just, it's a little while ago, um, a stencil stroke mask um, called Broken Bark. It comes in three different sizes, we've got the 5 by 7 We've got the 8x10 and we've got the 9x12 and they're all manufactured and sent out of Texas by a company that I'm happy to be working with called PM Artist Studio. I will talk about them more as I go along if you haven't heard about me talking about them before. So in real life, this is the, the small size, the 5x7. And this is the this is the 9x12 and I think that's the 8x10. Now you may note that they're not pristine. And why is that? Because I've already made this video once and we had a bit of a technological disaster and it didn't record properly and I'm having to start all over again. But you know what? Maybe that's because it wasn't meant to be and I'm going to do it this time. So what I plan to do is I just want to use, use this, these masks and I want to create a background. So I'm going to do a 12 by 12 background and I've got a couple of strips here which I might pick up detail if there's detail to do some ATCs or artist trading cards with. Now, um, I just need to say at this point, I wouldn't normally just use one design when creating a background. However, as I do launch videos of each of my new designs, I want to keep to only the designs I've launched um, or things that are found. Now, as this is the first launch video, I can only use these. But the next video along may have these and something else, so I can feature individuals as we go along. So bear with me, we're going to see what we're going to make. Now, a um, few things I've got. I've got a large brayer, I've got a small brayer, I've got my 5x7 plate here, which anyone who knows me, I use it as a palette. This is my canvas, which I'll be printing on, and that's a bubble that's going to drive me nuts. Plenty of bubbles in this. I've got some roll over, roll up uh, brayer papers over here just to keep my brayer clean when I need it. And I think with the selection of paints, that's exactly what we need to do. Right, I'm thinking I want to go quite light with this. I want something bright. Um, it's a slightly overcast day here. It's winter and I'm thinking I'd like to keep things a little bit light. So let's go this colour here. This is just a random bottle of... Um, Anything that was teal or turquoise that's been running out gets put into this bottle and from there on in it just mixes up it as it goes. Now I'm trying to only put a little bit in and I'm going to add a bit of white to that also because what I want to do is I want to create a really, oh that's a nasty bit of something in there. I shouldn't really clean this over my plate because it's likely to drop on it. Get off my fingers. I won't get off my fingers. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a colour just to cover up the whiteness of my 12x12 12 12, um, purely because I don't want it to be white. I just want it to be coloured in some way. And then we'll do a couple of techniques and I can talk to you about how, how I design the stuff and what the inspiration was for that stencil in the first place. Just stuff like that, really. I think it might be of interest. I'm loving the fact that I've, I have the opportunity to, to share what my imagination comes up with, design-wise, and then it's even more exciting for me when I see what other people are actually doing with it. So, just going to pop this down, lay it right close to the edge as I can. Even though my plate is a twelve by twelve, it sort of distorts slightly. Um, Grab my baron and just give it a bit of a press down. I'm not worried if I get paint on the back of my print. And I'm not worried if I get any paint on here because it does come off. I just give it a little bit of a rub with the damp cloth and it lifts off. So just putting that down there. So all I'm doing at this point is literally creating, creating some colour. See if I can lift some of this off onto my roll off, my brayer sheet. I don't mind having little bits of stuff on here. I'll move that over. Hopefully you can still see that. So there you go, I've got some stuff in there. So this is purely just time when I'm creating a background. I might use things like bubble wrap, I might use other stuff. There you go, Ooh, that bit stuck. That's a nice color to start with, right. Before I start, I wanna make sure that that's gone. 
I'll just dab it off my fingers. I was going to use a damp cloth, but I don't need to. So, right, I've got teal on there. Now, at this point, now, I would normally start with the biggest pattern first, then go smaller, then this would be the th third, which would be the final layer. And I'm going to stick with this while I'm doing this. So, I'm going to come in and I'm going to put a bit of a um, colour on here that's not dark. I want a colour that's it's in there. I like my stuff to be multi-layered and as something is multi-layered I like the fact that you have to look into it to see it. So I'm going to use a bit of this which is frosted mint. It's a pearl colour and I am going to put this one directly on the plate because I know that I'm going to use a reasonable amount of that. Also staying within the theme of keeping things light um, I might just put a little bit of white onto my mat over here purely because once I've brayed this out I might then mix it in a little bit further with white. So as you can see I've got that in there and now I'm going to come in. Now what this means is that the white paint is presumably going, oh whoops, that's missed, missed its mark, going over the mint coloured. Now we are literally looking to start creating bits of interest. So all I'm doing here is I'm just putting that down. I'm going to lay my mask onto it and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to press this down in areas just to pick up patches. Now you're probably not going to see this immediately but when I start tipping, tipping the print back and forth eventually you will see these. Uh, if I sh see you just see it there, I'm going to lift this up and just move it across to another area and do the same thing over here, just picking some of this up just to put it into the background. Oops, come on, off you come. There you go. So I've got, you can't barely see that, but I'm loving the fact that you can barely see it. I'm going to lift this off here and then I'm going to come in with one of those strips or two of those strips that I was going to make, um, what is it, ATCs or artist trading cards from, and just pick up some of this paint, just in the hope that I'm just picking up little bits of pattern, and I will build up ATCs as I go along. Um, it's just a side effect of printing for me. It's not, it's not my intent to create finished ATCs in this video. It's my intent to actually share. Um, using my stencil for the first time, or masks. I'm very excited. This was the very first mask that I actually designed for them. See, I'm just building up subtlety there. And that's what I want. Um, this was the very first design I designed for PM Artist Studio. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. To be able to have my own designs so that when I create backgrounds and things in the future, I, I can just use my own stuff. That That is such a privilege and an honor. And I absolutely love working with Patricia and Mariah and Brad and Izzy at PM Artist Studio. Wonderful family run company. Um, and I'm enjoying my time there, really I am. Um, I'm part of what I would regard a stable of designers, which is, which is wonderful. There's quite a few of us who are designing for them. And what that means is it gives you a real good variety of stuff there. Okay, right. Let's explain a little bit what I did. By putting this down and pulling the paint through this, I'd use this as a mask and it masked off areas of the background so I pulled it out of. Now I'm going to come back down, I'm going to flip this back over actually, and I want to use a slightly darker colour this time and I'm going to bray the colour into this, which means I'll then be using this as a stencil to leave the design on the plate. I'm actually thinking about it. Trying to line those up there. See if I can get the other one to match up in some way. That I might use two areas of this. Yes, I might use two areas for what I'm thinking of doing anyway. Right, so I've got um, turquoise with really pale blue in it. I think I'd like to add something now that's got maybe a touch of green to it. I wonder. Is this a nice green, the right green? I think that'll work. Is this 
I think this is an opaque, but I think if I put it on thinly enough, it won't be a thick, um, a total opaque. It'll be a semi-transparent. So just putting some paint on my plate, taking my brayer and picking it up, and then I'll I'll run it through the stencil. I'm giving a little bit of pressure just to get it down in into all of that fine detail. I'm trying not to go over the outer edge. But if I do, it's probably not going to bother me, to be honest. Yeah, the one thing that's been slightly frustrating about designing and having my masks and stencils launched in America has been that because here in Britain we're having postal issues. Um, I asked PM Artist Studio to always launch my products on their lives and they do live streaming on YouTube three times a week. And... Patricia, who is the P from PM Artist Studio, um, is a retired art tutor. So P really knows her stuff. And it's a privilege to see her work and seeing what she does with my designs. But the trouble is, I don't actually get my own designs till probably at least a month or so later because of the postal problems. Right, got that on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm not going to pick up the whole thing. I'm just going to pick up patches of it. I don't want this to look like military camouflage. I just want bits of it in a few little places. So there you go, that's the first layer going into my background. Right, I think I'm going to bring in the ATC ones and I'm just going to touch down and pick up patches. I don't want, again, this to look like camouflage gear because that's not what I'm aiming for. So, and I must say thank you to everyone who's already bought um, my stencils and masks. It's wonderful seeing what you're doing with them. Please always, always tag me or name me when you share images of the stuff you've done because it's wonderful to see what other creative minds can actually do with the stuff I'm creating. I find that interesting. In fact, I find it fascinating because when you create something, you tend to... I don't want to say you have a vision for it, but you tend to have something in mind. Um, a use, maybe, or a style, or a colour you have in mind when you, you choose to design something. And then what I tend to find is that other people will pick up the same stencil or mask and do something completely random and completely different with it, which, again, is wonderful. Right, I need to take this off here because it's on here and I don't want it on here for the next layer. So I'm just going to wipe it off. Now, if I was doing just gel printing without you guys watching, I'd have several bits of 12 by 12 on the go, or I'd have postcards or I'd have greetings cards, or I would have something else on the go that I would be using this in because I absolutely hate wasting paint. Paint's not the cheapest commodity in the world. And I like, I like to use color. I like a variety. However, I don't like waste, but because of the videos, I, I don't want to spend a million years just working at trying to clean up stuff continually. So I'm just going to come in one more time just to dry off my plates, basically, just to pull up anything that's residual. So, right, so I put, put that down. Let's have a look at where we're at with it. So... I'm quite liking that already. It's got a randomness to it. And I will tell you a little bit about the design. Okay, I have, I'm sorry, while I'm working, I'm gonna be grabbing some bubble wrap and I'm gonna choose some color to put on here as well. So um, I did want to explain how I designed some of, not some, all of my stencils as I go along. Um, this one was actually inspired by one of my own photographs. I like photography. Um, I do photography quite a lot. I don't do as much of it now as I used to. Um, while I'm talking, I'm just thinking colours here, guys. Um, I don't do it anywhere near the amount that I used to. Yes, I do like that. Let's use that. Um, however, I do have several thousand photographs on, on drives and things like that that I've used, taken over the time. And I very often will use my own photography as inspiration for design work. Um, when I used to be a cake decorator, well, I still am, I suppose, um, I used to reach into my 
photographic library very often to actually pick up ideas about texture or colour, coloration, and, and I love my photography. So this was part of a photograph series I did um, using um, trees and hence the name Broken Bark. It, these, these were actually, there was, there was these trees and the bark was so old it just cracked and split up. So what I did is I photographed the tree close up to get an image and then I worked replicating it within a, me within a shape and spacing that would work for um, masks and stencils because when you're designing you've got to remember you're either giving the user the holes to put paint through or the framework to mask paint from. So you can't have bits without them being attached to other bits and and Unless when I first started working with creating stencils and masks, that was a little bit of a challenge trying to work out which bit needed to be connected to which bit. Right, so I've got these colours on here now. Um, I think I want to pull in a bit of blue and I'm thinking like, not a dark blue, maybe, maybe something like this. Actually, no, not that. That doesn't look right at all. I think that's the one I was looking for. Something this blue. Now, I don't want to go too wild with it. I just want a little bit of it. And I think what I want to do, I don't want to use a small stencil yet because that will be one of the top layers. So I'm going to come in and put a little bit on the plate. I don't need a huge amount on the plate for what I'm planning to do. I'm just going to come in, put a little bit on here. Oh, this is very bubbly. I'm not sure that paint's working properly. Hmm, that doesn't feel right. The consistency of that paint feels wrong, wrong, wrong. Maybe the paint's a little older than I thought it was. So let's just take that off there because I'm not happy with that stringiness of that. Let's take that away and go use a different colour blue. Blue was the right choice for me. It just wasn't that blue. Now let's go to this blue, which is a bit more, a bit more of a like a royal blue or a navy blue. And again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to build bits of interest in the background so I can then pick it up. So again, I don't need the whole plate covered. I just want parts of it covered. And I'm going to come in. Now I think I'm going to stick using the medium sized version and all I'm doing is I'm just flipping this back and forth just giving myself some random areas of textural interest and that's it and that's like a flip-flop version. I first saw that done by Patricia from PM Artist Studio and it's very quickly become one of my favorite techniques. Now I'm going to come in here now I know this bit needs a bit of something so again, put that down, kiss it onto the plate, lift them off. In the middle needs something, so I'm just going to give it a bit in the middle. And I think this area here possibly needs a little something as well. At this point, I'm going to look at the edges of my prints. So I've got a bit there that's got a bit too much white on it for me. I'm just going to touch it down and pick it up. Okay, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. I want to put something more on here, and then we'll work with the final... The final touches of something. So I've got stuff on this plate, got stuff on this plate. Right, time to reach for that tissue paper. Um, all of my tissue paper, by the way, does eventually get used in collage, um, whether it's collage in my art journal, whether it's collage on my postcards, my ATCs, it gets used. I can absolutely assure you it gets used. And if you're used to watching my videos, you've probably seen me using it anyway. So, there you go. Now, what I'm going to do in the comments, no, that's wrong, Griffiths. What I'm going to do in the description box, which is, if you look in that corner, there'll either be a gravy for reading more, or if you can see the top of the description, it might actually say read more or see more. Click on that. When it opens up, I will put a link through to the Broken Bark on the PM Artist Studio website just so you can see it and then you can make a decision as to whether you'd like to add it to your library of stencils or masks to use in the future. 
Now I think currently, ooh, that's a bit of a challenge for me. If I actually was to add up all of the individual stencils that come within bundles as well as individual size variants, I would say there's probably about 35, um, 35 stencils or masks of mine now with PM Artist Studio. And believe me, there's more on the go and I'm really looking forward to sharing them all with you. And I will do one video at a time for each one of them. Right, this is where we're up to. Liking it is very, very sea, very underwater. I'm liking that. So I think what I want to do is I want to come in with some pale blue. I was tempted to use white, but I want to use white later on. This is just pale blue chalk paint. And what I want to do is put a very thin coating on here and then I'm going to use a technique that you're probably familiar with me doing and it's called kissing and I'll just gently lay the print down on the plate just to pick up small areas because there are small areas that I just think need to be lightened up ever so slightly. There you go, that's just enough on there and I want to come in, it's like this area in the middle, I want to just put a bit onto there so see just picking up areas of this. I'm trying not to be regimented in where I put it, just patches of it. I think that's enough on there. Let's just top some of the ATCs up with, with these. You might see these ATCs in the future as I'll probably use them in a future video because until they've actually got a fully covered background, they're probably not going to be further adorned. They're just going to be kept going because this is how I make up the backgrounds for my ATCs. I also do this for my RT postcards as well, just in case you're wondering. So, right, those are there. Now, at this point, I definitely want to put white into this. And because I said it looks a bit sea theme ish, I think I want to put something round um, that could potentially be bubbles or circles. So, bear with me, I need to go and have a look in the texture box. Okay, I found this. Right, this was an ice cube. It's got silicone bottoms to it. I picked this up in my local pound store, dollar store in the States, and it makes really interesting marks. So always look at items with an artist's eye when you're out shopping. Something that may look like an ice cube trade to someone is a mark making tool to us. So I'm gonna come in this time and I'm gonna use white acrylic paint, just regular. I'm not telling you brands of paints, guys because I would like to think that we can all do stuff with stuff we already have. We don't have to go out and buy something special unless you're looking to do a very specific project and that very specific project may require a specific color or a metallic or a texture. So I'm gonna press this down. And when I press this down, it'll give me a variety of circles and dots. And I don't want it all over the place, but I do want parts of it. I think that's possibly enough. Actually, I might want to put a little more over there. I think that's enough. It's, this is the bit that's bothering me, actually. The little bit right in the middle. Let's just pop you there. There you go, that's enough. Right, just get the rest of that off on something else. Pop that to one side, because I don't need that anymore. Pick up the white paint from here. So that's just giving me a little more visual interest on there. As you can see. And now I'm gonna come in with the small broken bark. And I'm gonna use it, how am I gonna use it? I wonder whether I'm going to, I might put stuff in the background with it. Okay, I don't mind that being on that plate. Um, I need to think for a second now. So I've used the large, used the medium, and I want to use the 5 by 7 version, because this is the sort of size detail I would use on a top layer. Now I've got pinks in here, and I've got blues and greens. I could put yellows in, but I think that may, might make this look a little bit too acid. I really would like, like to keep from going too dark until I do the final layer of these, which will be a little bit of a punch of something or other. 
I quite like the pink in here, which means I might do the final coating, might be something like magenta or something. But I want to add something to this that's just going to be another layer of interest, another layer of something on there. Okay, I've got this bit of sticky mat. Um, I think actually this came in packaging, but I've seen this. It's rubberized, it's sticky. I think it's meant to be for putting in draw drawers or stuff so it doesn't move around. But I like the size of the texture of this. And I was going to use magenta in the final layer, but I think I'm going to use this in magenta. And then do the final layer, possibly in a dark brown. Um, I'm kind of loving the dark brown thing lately. So, ooh, purple. I wonder. Purple has got blue in it. Let's do purple. Right. Let's take that off there so it doesn't stick all over the place. Bear with me. So I don't need a lot of this. I just need enough to roll out so I can pick up some stuff and transfer it to the plate. And that's enough of that. So I'm just going to come in. I'm going to press this down. Now, I like things lined up. So for me, I very rarely do diagonals. Um, I do them, but it's it's not something that's a normal for me. It it always seems to jar my eye or lead the eye out of the artwork. And it could, that's a personal view, obviously. But for me, it's it's just something I, I can't do it. It's It's odd. I can do it, but I don't do it that often. Let's put it that way. Right, just pressing this down on my brayer off mat because if I've got the ink, uh, the paint out here, I might as well utilize it. Right, let's clean my brayer off as well because that's looking a bit whatever. So if you also, by the way, if you have any ideas or things you're struggling to find as a mask or a stencil, by all means, put it in the comments. I can't say I'm going to be able to do it. I can't guarantee it'll ever get done by me. But if I know of one that already exists, I might be able to share it with you. If it's something I want to design myself, I'll add it to the list and see what I can come up with. But this is the Brayer Off sheet at the moment. I'm doing the Brayer Off sheets because I'm doing a Brayer Off journal. Um, or a notebook this coming year. So I just want to grab a new piece of paper. That's a new piece of paper, right. This is where we're up to, and I'm kind of loving that now. I do want to bring in just a little bit of the dark I was talking about, and I want to be a bit specific about where I place it. So I'm actually going to come in and do it with um, a sponge, and I'm going to put it through my smaller broken bark and then I think this one will be done. Now I'm going to use a part of a sponge to do this. Now what I do is I tend to buy bathroom sponges, baby sponges, car wash sponges. I get them inexpensively and I actually just cut them into chunks. A lot of the time once I've used them a couple of times they go in the trash or the bin. Sometimes if I'm doing a big project and I've used a lot I'll have a bowl of water and throw them into the bowl of water and then I just give them a good old squidgy out of my hand. I don't care if they get stained or discoloured. And therefore, I just have them and use them for that. So, right. I was thinking of using Van Dyke Brown. But I've just looked in my paint tray and I've seen copper. And I'm wondering... I think I want to go with copper. That was certainly not the choice I was going to do. Um, only because I think the, the, the Van Dyke Brown may just have been slightly too dark, which is why I was reaching for Van Dyke instead anyway. So I'm just going to pick up a bit on my sponge, dab off the excess, come in and I'm going to stencil using the, the Broken Bark mask as a stencil. And I'm going to put paint through. Now the trick with doing this technique is build up the layers of paint. Don't put a huge amount of paint on your sponge because what will happen is you will end up forcing the paint underneath the mask or the stencil. There you go. Now I'm going to keep it on sort of the same angle but I want to try and 
pick up different parts of the stencil so I don't have repeats happening or as little repeat as I can possibly have anyway. Sorry about the tapping sound. I've obviously got my plate on the edge of my work board. I'll pull up that one in the middle. Okay, and I think if I come over here, if I'd keep it that orientation actually, and then come in and pick up this edge. Now there's another nice thing I like about um, this mask as well, is the outer edge really has interest. So if you're someone who actually is creating and you want a creative border or an edge, you can always come in and run a sponge down. See if I can do a bit of that on here. I wasn't planning on it, but see if I put that down and I sponge, what I'm doing is I'm regenerating that edge as well as the bits in the middle. So that gives you something interesting. I might do a bit of that up here actually, liking, liking the way that looked. So, and granted these are not on the angle the other ones are, but that actually good for me. It gives me little bits of variety. See, now I think I have to do a piece in here. Let's see if I can do this without putting it in my own bit of paint. Just a little bit on the edge there. I'm liking that. Right, I want to put this to one side so it doesn't stick to something else. I'm going to move this plate because... Actually, am I going to move it? I'm going to need it, aren't I? Right, I'm going to turn the little plate around, the 5 by 7 and see if I can just use Brea on this end. Because one of my favourite bits of kit is this. It's plastic mesh. Sorry, you're wobbling. I've moved where my camera is held, so walking on floorboards actually makes things rock. Not the best, but it gives me a better working space with you guys. So I am going to pull in the Van Dyke brow because I've decided this does need a punch of something. And I'm just going to put a little bit of Van Dyke down. And then I'm going to brayer it across here just so I'm not mixing it with the copper. And come in, pick it up, pop it down. Um, I picked this up at my lo local craft store, by the way. I still, to this very day, am not 100% certain what it's supposed to be used for, but it's one of my favourite bits of kit. As I say, in future videos, I'll be able to um, pop back and forth between my own designs, so I'll have a lot more variety to pull against. So, I think we're done. I, I think that's lovely, right? Let's clear that to one side. While I turn the camera off, I'll be able to come in and actually use that paint up. Just lift this off my mat because I don't want it stuck down there. Let's take the mat out of the way as well. So here we go, guys. This is a quick background. I mean, we made that in approximately half an hour. Um, just from a white bit of card. But it shows you how I can just use one design. And I mean one design of mask and stencil. I don't mean one design because I put found objects into here as well. So this was the 9x12 and that was broken bark. This was the 8x10 broken bark. And this is the 5x7 broken bark. I mean, if I was going to say anything about these, this, this size that we'll be using to make larger things like 12x12s, anything from 12x12, 10 by 9s, anything of that down to A4s. This one would be the one that could go larger and go smaller. So if I had a smaller project, I've designed it so you've got smaller areas of detail within this. And then this is the one that I would probably use, as you saw me use here, for the top layers of detail. And also I would use it for things like postcards or ATCs because there's some really nice sections through here. I would put texture paste through here, maybe put sprays over the top of the texture paste, just to give me that real bark look about them. But it's an organic shape. It goes with almost anything. I mean, if you put it that way, it looks like tree bark. Put it this way, it looks like stones and river rocks. If you cut it off there, it's stencil it on, you can have mountain sides. There's lots to do with that, guys. So I'm really, really excited about those. So 
big thank you to PM Artist Studio. This is PM Artist Studio. This is Patricia. This is Mariah. Um, they do do all of these different bonuses where you can get extra um, percentages off when you buy stuff, like 10%, 15%, 25 uh, 20% off. But um, I would check them out on the website first and then go through to their social media. As you can see here, these are the times of the lives. I try to be in part, if not all, of every one of those lives. So if you have questions for me, come along. It's really educational, fun. It's, it's a wonderful community. Pop in. You can always ask me a question live while I'm online there. And if I can't answer it, I can absolutely assure you Patricia or Mariah will be able to. So thank you guys for the support. Thank you for those of you who have already bought my designs. Um, I'm going to be manically trying to catch up with my own launches. So watch out for more videos coming my way. This was Broken Bark and it's been a pleasure to share it with you. So I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time. Bye bye guys.